but in the North Island, another culture was flourishing. These people were more numerous, and they had time for carving and decoration, for music and song. They had time, too, for war. And they were cannibals. Their culture has largely survived. But what made the classical Maori culture so successful? More than anything else, it was probably the Kumara. Wherever soil and climate allowed, the Maori grew Kumara. He still does. This sweet potato was Aotearoa's convenience food. The Kumara made the difference between a people who had to hunt and gather food all over the place and one able to stay near the village growing and storing crops close to hearth and home. Ahu Ahu is the name the Maoris gave to an island off the Coromandel coast. Today, we call it Great Mercury Island. Here may lie the clue as to how the Kumara came to New Zealand and when. There are middens on this island that show that both mowers and men were eaten here. What's more, there's evidence to suggest that kumaras were cultivated here when the mower was still available. And that's quite fascinating because this could well be where Maori culture, so often based on agriculture, really got its start. Piles of stones are arranged in straight lines all over the island. But who put them there and why? I believe the stones may well have been collected together to protect the first plantings of crops brought to New Zealand. Those early gardeners probably chose an island like this, free from frosts and surrounded by warm ocean. But the terrain is so broken and rocky that before they could plant, the Polynesians would have had to clear the boulders to one side. The result was a series of stony windbreaks and an environment in which the kumara they'd brought from the Pacific could be adapted to New Zealand conditions. A century or two before Europeans reached New Zealand, the Polynesians were already very skillful gardeners, particularly in the North Island. And the gardeners of Ahu Ahu probably supplied the mainland with uh, kumara seed and taro tops for planting. Swamp plants now grow in the pits they dug to store kumara. With the harvest safely stored away, there was time to spare, time to develop and enjoy the skills of combat. What a grandstand view they'd have had from here of any challenger who dared to approach. Every hilltop was a potential fortress. The higher and steeper, the better. The role this island played in Maori culture can, of course, only be guessed at. But what we know for sure is that it was on the mainland, especially around the volcanoes of North Auckland, that classical Maori culture really took off. The district between Kaikohe and the Bay of Aikau